All right. And we're going to go at 10 seconds. <clears throat> Hi there. Thought I'd put together this quick video just uh, showing uh, something I've been working on recently uh, called uh, Showtime, uh, which is a little project that uh, I've just come up with because I was getting annoyed with um, essentially fussing around with uh, OSC and MIDI mapping uh, for Ableton Live over here. And uh, decided that uh, since it has such a wonderful sort of API underneath the hood uh, for Python, that uh, it'd be awesome to be able to sort of leverage that out uh, for other programs, uh, especially since I'm using Unity right now. And I thought that would be uh, an interesting way of uh, having an alternate way of just controlling this program. So I've uh, come up with this thing using uh, Pyro uh, to grab stuff, uh, expose Ableton Live's API out to external versions of Python and uh, ZeroMQ, which is a pretty snazzy uh, socket library which lets me sort of connect everything together to form this sort of, um, sort of performance-based sort of network system where uh, you have a stage where performers or pieces of equipment uh, can uh, register themselves to the stage and, and then announce essentially what capabilities that they uh, have. Uh, like, can you can they play notes? Can you fire clips? Can you go and get a list of all those clips? Uh, so basically, any sort of method you want, you can sort of expose out to this network, and uh, other things can go. And if they're interested, they can either listen to what you have to say and what messages you're sending out, or they can instead uh, request uh, to control things that you would let them control as well. So in this case, I have uh, quite a few things I've been trying to expose from Ableton Live. Um, that I've been controlling with uh, pretty much a whole bunch of other different programs. So I'm just going to show the uh, little Python test versions uh, of them today. I'll uh, probably make another video later on showing how the Unity one works when uh, that works a little bit better. Um, cool, but anyway, I'll get right into it. So the first thing I need to do is create a stage. So that's uh, its own script in itself. So I've got this all set up using uh, Python uh, 2.7. So I'm just going to run my stage. Okay, cool. So it's active on 0000, which is basically localhost for me. All right. And so that stage is there running in the background. And if I now run uh, my client, so this is going to be my uh, Pyro uh, and uh, Showtime sort of bridge, sort of my connection between the two uh, different networks. So I run that. All right. So just, just opening up Pyro. And oh, there we go. So this has created a um, little Pyro setup. And you can see here, how it's uh, gone and registered a whole bunch of methods that uh, this little node can provide to the network, such as uh, what fired slot index has gone off or uh, what values have it changed and updated and so on. So uh, each some uh, a whole bunch of these will actually fire when Ableton Live uh, changes them under the hood, and then they'll go straight out to the network um, and also accept incoming ones as well. So, But the next thing I need to do is just uh, set up my control surface. So if you have a launch pad or some other sort of hardware that nicely interacts with uh, Ableton Live already, um, you've probably uh, had to set up one of these before. But it's basically, this is, these are the Python scripts which will run in Ableton Live under the hood and expose most of the API out to the network. And another little thing as well is that it's got its own custom uh, virtual MIDI port. This is kind of important because uh, previous methods such as uh, OSC and stuff uh, would be able to get about 60 mil uh, would only be able to update about 60 milliseconds or so. And the reason for this is just because of how uh, Ableton Live sort of loop and timing sort of system works was about that's about how fast you could uh, every every 60 milliseconds is how often you could check essentially a queue um, for network messages. Uh, but I'm sort of cheating outrageously here, but I, I am actually sending a MIDI message on a control channel when I think computers just gone and have a little bit of a heart attack because it's doing a million things at once um, there we go so it's actually like outputting a MIDI message um, one every 10 milliseconds or so I've just sort of lightened the load a little bit for the, the purpose of recording the video but uh, I usually run can go down all the way to about one millisecond or so so it's it's pretty quick and it makes things pretty smooth and live as far as uh, being able to update incoming uh, messages as quickly as possible. So I'm going to stop that. Eventually. There we go. All right. So that should be set up. So I'm just going to do a quick test to see if that's working. There we go. And let's turn that volume down so I can sort of talk over the top of it. All right. So you can see here. Uh, Ableton, uh, the live Showtime client has 
got a bunch of messages here saying that the fired slot index has gone off and then the playing slot index has gone off as well. So this is quite useful because Ableton Live reports a lot of different things such as uh, like changes in states as well. Say I think slot index minus one here means that it's gone and turned itself off. So I, if I go and play a different clip, uh, it'll actually like intercept messages for when I've queued something and it's ready to play um, based on the global quantization and then when it actually starts playing because it eventually uh, catches up. So yeah, cool, that, that's working there. But let's um, let's control this. Let's uh, control this from outside of live rather than just sort of announcing things outwards. So I'm gonna open up a new Showtime node. This is just in my test folder. Uh, let's go 5.2, test method. Editor. So this is just a short little um, program that just lets me sort of manually uh, put my own values into some of these um, methods nice and quick. So yeah, it connects to the stage. Uh, the first thing it's given me is a list of all the nodes on the stage. And at the moment, there's only one, which is our live node, which is uh, da, 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 da. this one here. So that's all exposed. Okay, now I want the fire clip method. So it's here in the list of methods I can do, uh, I can use. So fire clip, and it wants a clip index and track index. So next step will be, okay, I want to connect to live node. I want to control fire clip. Cool, and so that is now connected directly to the node. So whenever you sort of want to control or listen to a node, it goes and connects to the other node directly. Not everything funnels through the stage. It's sort of just a, uh, sort of like a uh, posting board of everything you can do. So there we go, there's our uh, method editor which is connected to our Ableton Live node. All right, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say track index zero. This is the first one here. Clip index one. There we go. Whoops. No, didn't actually break it. That's surprising. Oh, there we go. Cool. So there we go. So I can uh, play that. Maybe I want to uh, zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's bring in the bass. Cool. There we go. Let's crank that up. A <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That's a base. Some basic um, clip triggering. Um, I'll start sending some values now. Let's uh, let's play with the gate on the. Uh, uh, on my arpeggiator. So I'm just going to close this and open it up again just to make it a little bit quicker. Live node set value. Okay, category zero, just to split between uh, return devices and uh, track devices. So you can sort of use different categories. Uh, I'm going to get devices zero because it's my first device here in the chain. Track index zero value is going to be. I don't know, 20 or so. Is, uh, so this range is between one and, uh, 0 and 127 at the moment, so like sort of standard MIDI, um, uh, MIDI mapping. Parameter index is going to be 1 because the on-off switch is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Cool, so that's gone automatically adjusted. Um, cool, so that's just like for sending one-off values, but what if I want to sort of um, send more than that? So it's, it's uh, pretty quick. The sort of uh, size of the buffer seems to be pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use now a bu 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 uh, another one that I have, which is a sine wave writer. Connect that. I don't live a node. I want live node. Thank you. Uh, do, 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 set value. So same process. Category zero. Device zero. Track zero. Value. Doesn't matter because it's going to override it. Parameter into one. There we go. So if you look over here, our gate is now. Whoop, video's lagging a bit there. There we go. That's cranking up and down now. Cool. And if we actually go back to our node, because it's going nuts here with all the values that we're sort of just uh, sending straight over to it. Sweet. So on that note as well. Now I want to grab, uh, but I want to listen to some of these as well. I want to maybe um, make another program that's going to visualize some of these uh, different parameter changes uh, over time. So I'm going to create and I'm going to run another node and this one's going to be a subscriber. That was a method subscriber. Oops. Where am I? 
Oops. No, we want Python 2. Alright. Alright. Live node. Uh, we want... What was it? No. We want to get one that is a read-only one, not a write one. In this case, it's going to be... What is it? It's values updated, I think. I'm just going to double check. Set value, stop track. Value updated. Right, so I'm going to listen to that one. And that will give me the output. So I'm going to go value updated. And there we go. So now I'm subscribed to all the messages that Ableton Live is uh, sending out every time one of the parameters change. So... It's given me basically all the all the parameters that I um, had to sort of input. It'll give me out as well. So, uh, what device index is, what track index, the value, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so that's basically it right now. Um, all of the code is available for both Showtime and uh, the Showtime Live plugin. Uh, all available on GitHub right now. Um, it's still very much, I'd say, quite. I'd say alpha quality. There's a lot of stuff that can possibly break. There's a lot of uh, new. F there's a lot of features I want to add to this over time. Uh, like at the, you can control send values, um, or a bunch of different device and return values, and so on and so forth. But so much more that we can do with this, uh, such as like, a, well, it, it, basically anything that you could think of that works inside of the um, Ableton Live API, we could probably expose out and control in any way we want. But of course, no MIDI and OSC. Uh, required, so you don't have to worry about uh, running out of uh, MIDI mes uh, MIDI channels, essentially, which uh, which would be a bit of a stretch at 4,000, but you know, completely possible if you're essentially mapping so many different uh, channels to many different things. But doing it sort of like the method call way instead, it just lets you, it just gives you like a different degree of flexibility, I think. Um, yeah, so there's a C-sharp version as well for Showtime that is uh, sitting in the same repository, um, which is compatible with Unity with a few tweaks. Um, I'll put up a better quality of that as well if you want to, um, say, write Unity applications to control Ableton Live without any MIDI or OSC, um, which is uh, yeah quite useful. Anyway, I hope that this is useful to you guys, and uh, please, uh, please, please, please give me uh, feedback if anybody decides to you know, give it a go, or things, or anything you think that um, I could possibly improve on this. I um, eagerly await any and all feedback uh, for this, and I hope to um, make it uh, work as well as I can in the future. So, anyway, thank you very much for listening.